Hello, welcome to the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden and I'll be your host. Uh, we, the, for those that haven't seen the Veterans Corner, it's a show dedicated to our veterans, their families, and all those that support our veterans. Uh, tonight we've got uh, actually a part two of a two-part series on uh, the United States Veterans Rowing and Kayaking Foundation. Uh, you, you may see the gentleman all the way to my left. He was on the show last week. Uh, we talked uh, on part part one. Uh, actually, I'll start with uh, start with Paul. Paul uh, Stephen uh, Var Varsigi. Yes, I said it right this time. <laughs> for those who've been watching this show for a long time, you know Bingo. names, and uh, uh, you hesitated, so you threw me off. Uh, Paul Paul is the president and founder of the United States uh, Veterans Rowing and Kayaking. Uh, great to have you back. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for, for thanks having for us. Thanks for being here. Uh, and, and to my, my left, we have uh, Lion Joan Bennett. Uh, Joan uh, has many, many titles. Uh, has, she's worn many hats. Uh, she's the president of the, of the Unite, uh, New Haven uh, Lions, Club. Lions Club. There we go. I'm trying to look through my chicken scratch here. Uh, she's also the past district governor, and she is also a guiding lion. Uh, for for the Lions Club, uh, Joan, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. Uh, and to my right, we have Alex uh, Dembski, uh, Lion Alex Dembski. That's uh, right. See that? I, That's I, right. You I caught it. myself. Good. Uh, he told me he is a lion tamer. So what is what is a lion tamer? A lion tamer is a board <laughs> position in a lion club. It's other organizations refer to as a quartermaster, person in charge of the property of the club, the facilities. Well, it's, it's, it's cute great. name, cute name. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I wrote it down. I, I figured we go with that and then uh, it's just a little talking piece. But uh, thanks for being here, Alex. Thank you. And we have Lion Jim Terrell. Uh, Jim is the treasurer of the Bethany Lions Club. That's great. Um, and if you watched the first show last week, uh, Jim was the demonstrator on the rowing machine. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here again. Uh, one, one, one of the things we usually do when we start the show is to talk about, uh, uh, just recognize, I should say, the veterans. Now, off to my left, Paul, you were a uh, uh, Marine. I'm trying to remember from the last time. Why don't you tell the viewers when you served, yeah. what branch? So I joined when I was seven, uh, 1976 at the age of 17. My father actually had to sign me in to get in because uh, you couldn't get in at 17 unless your parents had to sign you in. So they signed me in because uh, he wanted me to go very badly to serve the military. I uh, was not a very good student. Uh, I dropped out. I was, in fact, I was so stupid that when they sent me to uh, summer school, I flunked summer school. So that's pretty stupid. <laughs> but anyway. Um, no, you, yeah, yeah. no. So anyway, they, the school didn't want me. Uh, they said, look, you're not cut out for school. Uh, we suggest you go pump gas at a service station. And I told that to my father and he just went nuts. <laughs> he said, no son of mine will ever uh, pump gas. So he basically gave me an ultimatum, which was to join the military. And um, I did that. Uh, I was very ambitious. I went down to the uh, recruiter's office and uh, wanted to sign up for the Air Force. So they said to me, well, look, you got to sit down and take this test. So I sat down, they gave me two hours to take it. It took me two and a half. And then he said at the end, the examiner, he says, oh, we're gonna call you tomorrow, I'll let you know how you did. So he called me up and he said, I'm sorry, I didn't make it. Unfortunately, you, you didn't pass. So I came in the next day and I, I only had three other branches to pick from. And I didn't like the way the Navy looked. You know? hey, 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 I'm hey, sorry, hey, I didn't hey, like the hat. So. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, it was the, either the Army or the Marine Corps. And uh, so I, I chose the Marine Corps. I went in, told the recruiter what happened, flunked out of high school, flunked out of summer school, went to the Air Force. They flunked me. I'm really stupid, so you're going to, you know, really help me out here. So he said, don't worry about it here. Sit down here. Here's a number two pencil. Take the test. Don't worry about it. Took the test. 
he said, I'll call you tomorrow and I'll let you know how you did. Calls me up, he said, congratulations. <laughs> you scored one of the highest tests ever. Really good job. So, well, I got Paul, I, I got to tell you, you kept saying you're stupid. And, and you couldn't be that stupid if you're the president and founder of this organization. And, Late bloomer. Uh, well, from that, uh, uh, from that first segment that we did, uh, you, you've done a fine job along with everybody else. And with Jerry that was on the show. We have have a fantastic, yeah. absolute fantastic team of people that we work with. Yeah. I can't say enough about Jim, Alex, they've been volunteering for three years for our foundation and they're absolutely fantastic. And, and Joan too, she's been so instrumental in helping us you know, with fundraising and other activities. And that's what it's all about, bringing people together in the communities uh, one by one and, and uh, just giving back to the veterans. And there's programs that we do that nobody else in the United States is doing. And, and, and we feel we're impacting the lives of so many people. And so now we're also working with people, uh, the civilian uh, blind veterans, or I'm sorry, not veterans, they're just uh, civilians with vision impairment or blindness. And we decided to bring them in and, and work with them and provide recreational rehabilitation for them. I think the hardest thing is to get these individuals out of the house because they live very isolated lives and they're alone and they need to get out and, and meet new people and to socialize, meet new friends and just feel like they're part of the world. It's very important, yes. very important. Uh, two more veterans? Oh, veteran. Yeah. Yes. What, what, what branch? In, uh, United what, what? States Army Artillery. When did you serve? I served in the early 60s in Korea and later at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Okay. And I'm not a, a, a veteran. I was ever in the military. However, I was a civilian contractor with Army Intelligence all through the 1970s. I was in and out of Southeast Asia from 1970 to 79. You played a very important role in Vietnam, uh, even though you know, not, not a veteran. I dealt with the information. You know what? Uh, you know, thank you for your service and, and for, for the veterans. Thank you on behalf of the viewers and, and, uh, and the crew here at the Veterans Corner. Um, and although I'm not a veteran, I'm proud to say my dad served in World War II. My son was in the Navy, and currently my so grand. Finally, the Navy. My, <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> and currently my grandson is in the Marines. Wow. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Uh, you know, that, that's one aspect uh, that maybe down the road we can do a show on uh, military families. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Be, because they certainly play a, in a very important role um, in their loved ones' participation. So let's, uh, let, let's, let's get going. Uh, Paul, well, I guess the first question was, was to you, actually. How did you get involved with the Connecticut Lions Club? It started really with the Rhode Island Lions Site Foundation that um, <clears throat> were kind enough to give us our first grant um, to create a program for visually impaired blind veterans uh, from the Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, we had 17 blind veterans that were referred into our program. And so we created a program, an indoor rowing program for them. And it just took off like crazy. And it became so popular that uh, it got national recognition. And then um, shortly thereafter, Connecticut found out, the uh, hospital at West Haven, VA, found out about the blind veterans in Rhode Island, how successful that program was. So they asked us to create a blind veterans rowing program in Connecticut. And that also became so popular that we eventually got these blind veterans on the Connecticut River rowing in the first year. And uh, Channel 8 News was there to cover the story. Uh, and it became really phenomenal from that point on. And then we started doing races, indoor races with the blind veterans as well. So we, we are very passionate about working with the blind veterans, especially because there's something special about individuals with um, no ability to see anything, you know? And, and so it really tugs at my heart um, to be able to recognize them in a very special way, you know, and to, to be able to impact their lives and help them in, in a way that nobody else is doing, you know, getting them out of the isolation that they're in and, and depression. really 
you're really showing people that they could do this, you know, because who would think putting blind veterans in a kayak, yeah. you know, like what idiot would <laughs> try that? Yeah. <laughs> well, as it turns out, we're, the, we're, we're that organization that started it and it's become so popular, but we do it in a very responsible, safe way. Um, we have great coaching staff and Alex is one and, and Jim is the other. And Jim's son recently came uh, he's an Air Force gentleman, and he did phenomenal, you know. So we have a coaching staff that goes out in two-person kayaks. We put the blind veteran in the front, and we put the coaching staff in the, in the back. And we also have uh, lifeguards as well. So we're very safety-minded. Uh, safety but it's great for them because <laughs> they get the feel of the, of the wind and, and the sun and, and the water. Sun and the water. And right. floating, and you know, and it becomes very fun for them. So we've actually raced. Uh, last year we did some races with the blind veterans, which was kind of fun, <laughs> from one end of the lake all yep. the way down to the other. <laughs> and I'd be yelling, "You're going in the wrong direction!" <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, they can't see. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. Uh, Joan, you, yes. we've, we've already established that uh, you've played some very important roles with the Lions Club, uh, top positions. Um, how many years have you been with the Lions? Actually, it is 26 years this month. 26 years. All, all, uh, all out of New Haven? Or yes, sir. Just, uh, uh, Tell us about the partnership that you formed with the United States Veterans Rowing and Kayaking uh, Organization. Uh, also, if you well, the, I, there's a follow-up question on that. I'll, I'll ask that afterwards. But you know, tell us about your partnership. Okay, actually, again, as I refer to um, Lions Clubs International, which we call LCI. Yeah. Um, they do require that each new club, as it starts, has at least two guiding lines. I'm one, and Pam Marinero is the other one. And we're there to help them with any problems or any ideas that they may have, how they can do it, mainly because we know the in and outs of LCI, what LCI requires, what they'll do, so this way we can help them. Um, as an example, they're looking for a grant. And I've spoken to people in LZI, I've told them, I'm not, that's not my forte grants, but I know the people who do do the grants. And so we have the ball started. And actually what happens is we ourselves as Lions can start doing fundraising. We can do it in what they call the multiple district. There's three multiple districts here in Connecticut. And we can do fundraising among the all the other Lions clubs, and Lions do love veterans, and they love helping them. So this way here, if we say, for instance, want to uh, raise or try to raise $25,000 here among the Lions, LCI would give us a matching grant of $25,000. So whatever we could do in that particular way, that's one of the ways we can help them. But there's other ways since the club has begun that we've been there to help them. And that's it's our duty, if you will, for at least two years. We stay with a new club for two years until they get there. That's great. That's great. I mean, organizations that are just starting off need to be you know, partnered up with uh, other organizations. To, to, it obviously, it helps both. It's an asset for both, both, both groups. Well, Lions Clubs, uh, Lions Clubs is actually, it's been voted the number one NGO. Um, and it has 1.5 million members throughout the world in over 240 countries. Wow. I didn't realize and that. our motto is, we serve. Yeah. And so that's what we do, we serve. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just like the, the VSOs with, the, with the, the veterans, American Legion, uh, VFW. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're you know, DAV, and I can go on, uh, but uh, you know, the, the veterans are still serving. The yes. show, mm. the show. I mean, you've, you've got veterans on the crew. 
Mm -hmm. And we have, we have a lot of veterans that are Lions. Mm -hmm. I would say there's veterans in every single Lions club here in Connecticut. I know there are in ours. There are. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, Alex and Jim, how, how long have you been involved with, with the, the, with the I'll, I'll use the abbreviation, the USVRK, and uh, what, what do you do to assist them? Oh, we've been involved with them uh, for three years last uh, spring. Correct. When uh, Paul came to us, um, at the time my wife Ann was the president of the Bethany Alliance, and he, Paul approached Ann, explained the program, and uh, Ann turned to me and said, this, looks, this sounds like something you'd like to volunteer for. And I said, yeah, I would. Uh, and what they really wanted from us was, of course, funding. But also, in Bethany, we have a, a park appropriately named Veterans Memorial Park, which has a nice little lake on it, Lake Hockenham. <clears throat> and it's a perfect spot to do kayaking or canoeing. It's surrounded by high hills, so the, it's sheltered from the high winds. It's big enough that uh, you can get out there and do some serious kayaking and have some fun, get some exercise, but small enough that all the boats could be supervised very easily. If anybody gets in trouble, they can be reached very quickly. Yeah. So it's a really great situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul wanted our help in going to the town and getting permission for the town to utilize that facility, which we did. I was involved with that, and I've, I was asked to be the point man with the, between the Lions and VRK, which I happily have been doing ever since. Um, and I deal with the town getting access and maintaining it. The town is thrilled with the, with the project. It's the kind of utilization of the lake that they wanted to see. They gave us permission to build kayak racks for the organization. Uh, I got the key. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Jim and I, our weekly sessions go out and serve as the as the coaches, as volunteers, as Paul described, helping the, guy, the disabled guys in and out of the boats, getting the boats ready, taking them out, paddling with them. Right. Seems doing that, we have uh, we get more out of it <clears throat> than the, the veterans do. Yeah. Uh, it's an um, amazing thing to see these in the back seat. You can see yeah. how how they enjoy what mm -hmm. they're doing. Um, rewarding, they, very, very rewarding. Very. Even the blind vets, you, you, they, the the sense that they have, uh, the awareness that they have when they're in these boats, is is very inspiring. It's it's just. Uh, amazing phenomenon and uh, they get right into it oh, you know there's a physical part of it and they go like gangbusters oh, yeah. me out. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then when they finish you could see it in their face and you could see yeah. the, the contentment and they're raring to go yeah. and next week yeah. it's just a wonderful it motivates them. A great thing to be associated yeah. with and quite frankly I'll say it again I get a lot more out of it than they do. Yeah. Yeah, yes. It's really rewarding seeing the, the pleasure they get. Uh, a blind person who can't get out, mm -hmm. being outside, feeling the sun, the wind, the spray, splashing, <laughs> giving us all showers yeah. with their paddles. <laughs> but just uh, the, the, the motion, physical motion, they, it, it's really great to see these and guys. And the ones that are them. really physically impaired, you know, getting them in out of those boats. I mean, Paul, you. you yeah, we've developed our you, lifting you, you muscles. You've got a system to get, get them in and out. And uh, it's not easy, but uh, once they're there, it's, uh, yeah. well, let's put it there. It's, it's tough to get them out physically and mentally to get them out of those boats because they really enjoy it so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult getting them back in once they're out there. To, it's to, just to say that that's experience. rewarding would be a vast understatement, I'm sure. Correct. Uh, what are the goals that the Lions Club as far as working with further recovery uh, of the injured and disabled uh, veterans, uh, w with the veterans uh, uh, rowing and kayaking, what are some of the goals that the Lions Club are working on, I should say, you know, for, for, for the future recovery? Well, we're, from our point of view, we'd like to see more Lions Clubs involved. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key here, uh, especially with what Joan just said, which is that um, a lot of the clubs around the country, in a, especially in the state of Connecticut, have veterans within them. So that in itself is, is good to know. Uh, because you know that linkage is, is very important. You know, veteran helping other veterans. So our hope is that we can, if we can get volunteers that are veterans from each Lions Club to help out and start creating other divisions for us to open, 
and help us fund it. That's the most important thing because we can create them very rapidly, but if we don't have the funding in place, then we can't do anything. So each location is a unique location and it, it involves different uh, costs and so forth. Um, certainly buying the kayaks is, is one, one issue, or if we get lucky enough and we get donations this year, we received, I think, five kayak donations, but sometimes we don't get that many. So when we do get them, we want to utilize them as quickly as possible. And then the other issue is, of course, transportation. So we have a limited amount of vans that, that we uh, own ourselves, the foundation. And uh, buying new vans, it, it's very, very costly. So at that point, we're going to rely on uh, Lions Club members to actually physically pick these uh, blind um, athletes or potential athletes up and bring them to uh, these locations. So that is our goal, is to just get more lines involved because there's so many lines out there and, and there's so many uh, opportunities to serve. And, and so one thing is that, you know, this is just another opportunity to serve and specifically for veterans. You know, right now, uh, the lines are kind of scattered in different directions and they're doing different projects, all vision related and very important work. But they're, we're the only organization that is actually coming to them and saying, look, we need help with this, you know, because it's for veterans. But now we've also accepted non-veterans into the program. So anybody who's vision impaired um, that the Lions Clubs want to refer into our program, we will take them. So they don't have to necessarily be veterans. Just have a vision impairment or blindness, and you can come to any one of our events. And shows like yours will really help. As an example, I was telling Paul, a few years ago they started um, what they called VIP fishing, and it started down in North Carolina. And it grew because it became publicized, and especially among the Lions. Now it's in several states. In fact, we have it in Connecticut. We have it in Massachusetts. So, exposure. Yes, in the Lions, we always say we are the best kept secret. <laughs> Not too many people know about Lions. And in fact, if any of your viewers would like to know more about Lions, we have a website. It's called lionsclubsinternational.org. They could find out a lot of things about what Lions do. Lionsclubinternational.org. Lionsclubinternational uh, you know, we've had a number of organizations and groups you know, here on the show uh, that we had no idea what they did. Uh, and, and they're well-known organizations, but we just, you know, it, you know, most of us just might be in the wrong, you know, venue of hearing, you know, where they're marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it, it's, I mean, we've learned a lot on this show, the crew, myself, uh, Easter Seals. Mm -hmm. Easter Seals, I mean, they do a tremendous amount for veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to the point where we had uh, the vice president on, uh, president on the show, uh, Beth Pritchard, that we had no idea. And, and we, we learned an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And that's just like here, you know, for the Lions. Uh, it, it'd be great to uh, have you guys back again and, and, and discuss, you know, mm -hmm. future, yeah. uh, That'd be great. future we, events. We'd be very happy to do yeah. that. We'd love yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I had a whole series of questions uh, uh, lined up here, but you know, we, we were we were talking in the beginning. We were just a roundtable discussion and kind of you know spent some of the time. We've only got a few minutes left. Is there anything that you'd like to put out that uh, we haven't covered? Uh, anything that uh, you know? Did we go over funding? Uh, yeah, we went over funding on the last show. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Well, we're looking for corporate sponsors. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And if anybody's interested in becoming a corporate sponsor, they can reach out to us on our website. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the questions here, we've already answered it. Uh, uh, Jim and Alex over here, I mean, it, it was, do you see a quality of life improvement for those who have participated? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Have, uh, Absolutely. I mean, uh, Definitely. Uh, uh, tremendous. Uh, tremendous, right? You know, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, I mean, that's the goal. Absolutely, yes, that's that is the, the goal. goal. You, you know you're successful in any organization that you're, that you're doing, that, that, you know, the, the, your, your mission, uh, if, if you do see a measurable uh, uh, improvement in the right direction. 
Um, how can the Lions Club members create a special fund to help support the VRK through the Lions? There are fundraisers. You can have a fundraiser. You could have a comedy night. You could have a wine tasting. You can do different types of uh, events. Yeah. And Lions can come and they can pay and as long as they are a charitable, they do have the 501c3. With Lions, if you do fundraising, mm -hmm. all the net proceeds that you get from that fundraising has to go to a charitable event. Mm -hmm. The club cannot keep even one dollar. Everything, so we get all the clubs, yes. 100%. Like in District A where he is, we have 51 clubs. But we have even more clubs in District B and in District C. So if we have fundraisers all together from all of those clubs, yes, we could easily. No, no, we just have a couple minutes left. You had mentioned the districts. Uh, how are they divided here in Connecticut? Uh, a is um, New Haven and Fairfield County. Uh, B is up around Hartford County in that way. And then C is what I call the quiet corner up around that way from New London and yeah. up. It's, uh, well, you know, uh, we got probably about a minute left. So, as you found out on the last last segment, uh, part one of this, uh, it goes by fast. Yes, it twenty five minutes. Yes, yeah. You know, it, it, it was really great to it was really great to have you folks on uh, on the show. We, we we certainly learned a lot about the lions and and, and also the uh, the rowing and kayaking, the veterans rowing and kayaking. And if I can make one more comment, yeah. Lions Clubs International offers a special, uh, when you join, there is a cost, normally like $30 to join yeah. Lions Clubs. They usually waive the cost or it's a less cost if you're a veteran. Yeah. There you go. Okay, got about 30 seconds left. So uh, once again, I wanna thank, thank everyone for being here. Uh, we learned a lot, very informative show. Uh, it was great to have you and, and I look forward to having you back. Thank you very for good. having thank us. Thank you for having us. Very much. You know, we, uh, we actually, we could have had a, a part three on this, but uh, we, we will have you back uh, within, within the next few months, hopefully. I uh, want to thank the, uh, the viewers uh, uh, for watching, uh, for joining us. Uh, that's about all the time we have. I'm Chuck Wooden. See you next time on the Veterans Corner.